Now we're gonna do uh, more Goa. Yeah. So how 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 you define the input payload and the response uh, types? So Goa has this kind of thought that a particular type might have multiple ways to look at it, um, and what might have multiple ways to look so at a, it? So any particular like object might have multiple ways to look at it. So okay. um, so one of the most of the time, you only want to look at it one way. The, it's the object. That's okay. all you care about. Customer. Or yeah. Car. Yeah. So other times, however, you want to give different bits of information to different people. So, for example, we use it for users. We have uh, mo we have a way to look at a user if you're not that user, and a way if you are that user. Oh, okay. And if you are the user, you'll see things like right. what your email Permissions. is. Permissions. But if you're not the user, you won't see the email. So you, that's so Goa calls those views. Okay, I think of them as permissions, right? Yeah, like so you are that user, you can see it, you mm -hmm. are, you can't. So sometimes you want a more restricted view just because you want less information going back and forth. So if you got some big, massive, some, uh, like a course, for example, you might want a, a, a view that doesn't have the curriculum. So so it gets so you get the course fa information about the course faster. Okay. Compared to if you're looking at that course in detail, you might want a more detailed view. Yeah. Load just the description in the first video, bring the curriculum in later. Yeah. So, so that's another way to think of it. So, yeah. so Go calls those views. You've got data, and you've got views into that data. Yeah, this sounds a little bit like model view controller. <laughs> it's kind of a little, almost. You got your model, your data. You got your view. view. Yep, and then the actions are your. Yeah. And then actions over in resources. There's so control. much like uh, acronym speak in programming. Yeah, there is. In a lot of different concepts. Yes. That all overlap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, so, Venn diagram style. So, so to, I so I normally define all our types in a subfolder within design. Uh, in each microservice, I have a design folder for all the Goa design stuff. Yeah. And then I usually have a subfolder called types for yeah, any for the individual types that you're awesome, needed. super organized. So I wish I was as much as I should be. My I, my resources file here is a little bit in some of the microservices is a little longer than it should be. Yeah. So. So types, I usually have defining all the input and output types. So for example, in team.go here, I've got, here's the output type of team. So when you get a team, it gives back team media, yep. which is this type. And then I've got two more types, one for when you're creating a team and yep. one for when you're updating a team. Now you're, you're calling them types, you've also called them views, and so, here they're variables. So let's so just make a get, little... Uh, get a little more detail as to yeah, what that means. differentiation between so, a view, a variable, a type. So when I define... Uh, so I'm just calling these all types. Each one of these is a type. Um, yeah. These two types are input types, and then the media type is an output type. Okay. So the difference is a media type has views. Oh, got it. So if you do, if you got no views at all, yeah. then it's just a type. And oh, so cool. You're in, so you're, the stuff you send to the microservice is yeah. almost always going to be a type because yeah. there's, it doesn't make sense for there to be a different view for what cool. you're telling the server. Cool. Um, and so these these uh, these types that are for things sent, right? So, so yeah, they're they're the they're like uh, somebody submitting a form or sending over mm -hmm. data yes. for the API communication, microservice communication, and then you define what that data is coming in right there with yeah. a type like on line forty two. Yeah. And then when you're ready to send something back, Oops. it's often a media type. Yes, and then when you send something back, it's a media type. Okay. Um, so let's start with type because they're very because they're simpler, and a media type is almost like a, a, an extension to a okay. type. So so to create a type, um, you're gonna uh, it's a very you're gonna say var, give it a name that you'll use uh, elsewhere. So create team params because over here. That's what it's called in what I'm passing the payload. Okay. Um, oops. Ah, small screen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, e equals type. You give it a name. This will be what it's called in your code. Okay. Um, it'll automatically do uh, shortening. Like for example, it'll in in Go, it'll replace a dash lowercase t with a capital T to make sure it's valid Go code. Okay. But this is this is what you will call it in your code when you're actually using this. Cool. Uh, it, it creates a struct. Okay. Um, and then you have a uh, a series of attributes. So each one of these attributes is like a field in a struct. So a create team params ha uh, has a name and has invites. 
Yep. Um, a name is a string. I give it a, a description. And then I've got, um, I, I tell Goa that I will have a minimum and maximum length requirements, which I've got defined as constants at the top of the file to make them more easily uh, cool. visible and editable. So a name, so, I, so I'm telling Goa, when you uh, create team params, has a name, that name's a string, and, it ha and it's between two and 500 characters long. Cool. Um, alt also, you can have uh, so attributes. This one is an array of. So array of takes another type, and then it and it's a slice in Go. So invite param I've got located uh, here, and so it's just another type with attributes. And mm -hmm. so, so so when you're creating a team, you need an array of invites. Mm -hmm. So and I've got details here. So, which I've explained some actual additional requirements. So, so this invite here is the list of people to invite into the team, and then I've got, and then I explain what uh, the current it requires the current user to be an ad admin. Mm -hmm. So that's not something I can tell Goa about, but it's something I can add in here to kind of explain to front end, hey, this is an extra requirement for this field. Make sure you deal with this because our code will tell will give you an error if you don't follow mm -hmm. this. So that's the thing I like to do. Um, and then I say this array has to be at least one, must have at least one item in it. Nice. And then required. S same as, same as params over here. You said array, but required. slice, right? Yeah, it's, it's a slice in Go. Right. So, and then required, just like params over in resources, uh, you put required to say both these values are required. Yeah. So when you're creating a team, both of them are required. When you're updating a team, it's got two attributes, neither one of them is required. So, um, so that's a standard type. It's just a list of attributes. Cool. Um, so attributes got a name, a type, a description, and then possibly optional uh, like details for uh, restrictions like length and such. Awesome. Um, so that's attributes required. Um, required is not nothing's required here. So media types. A media type is a type that might have one or more views. Um, the way I think of it is a type is input, a media type's output. Yeah. So it's a little simpler than worrying about the exact details of what the difference is. Um, it's the 80-20, right? 80% of the time. Yeah, mo yeah, 80% of the time you only need to know this is output, this is input. Um, I've got a description here. You can put a description in your uh, type types as well. Um, I didn't bother here because the name is fairly right. self-explanatory. Right. It's the create team parameters. Right. Um, so for most media types though, I, I put the description though anyway because it shows up in Swagger. Yeah. And so it's a little bit easier for anyone who's looking at your stuff to see. Um, content type is not actually required. Um, I'm specifying that this team media is a content type application JSON. That is because if it's application JSON, when I'm using a tool to test the API, it uh, formats it a little better if it's yeah. application JSON. Right. But it's not actually required. This right. would work just as well. Um, or you can put more specific, like this is a type uh, application team media would be valid too. So the well, content will, type is what is that's it, what actually H, gets sent yeah, to the browser, it, right? It's the HTTP uh, header right. that gets sent yeah. back. So uh, some of my testing tools uh, look uh, format the response data a little better when I specify that the content type is JSON. So I put the JSON in most of my media types, but it's not actually required. Um, the, after content type is attributes, which is just a func. And inside attributes, you have the exact same parameters you have in a type. You get attribute and require. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they are uh, literally exact matches. Mm -hmm. So attribute logo ID is a string. It's the ID of the logo. Mm -hmm. um, so you will put into this the complete list of every possible attribute that is in this particular type. So and those it, are going to be fields in a struct. Yes, these will be fields in a struct. They get taken from the struct and then put into that media type and sent to the user. Yes. Um, uh, 
here's a nice uh, example, uh, something to uh, enum. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can have in like string, you can have minimum and maximum lengths, or numbers, you can have mi uh, minimum and maximum values. Yeah. Uh, enum is basically says string must be one of these values. So member roles is located here. So, oh. so that field must be one of these three values, yeah. and that'll show up in the swagger. So, yeah. so when, so when, uh, when you pass to someone else, they know uh, user role will be admin, manager, or member, mm -hmm. nothing else. Which is a little more detailed than just a string. A string can yeah. be anything. And that dot dot dot, I call that unfurling a slice. It's taking everything in a slice and dumping it out as comma yeah. separated. Yes. String values. Yep. Or um, whatever the value type is in, yeah. the, in the slice. And then you've got your required thing. For required for output, um, basically if it's not required, it's a pointer and you can have nil. Mm. Um, and then front end may not get that value because it's nil. Mm. Um, so I normally make anything that I know I'm going to have, I, I, it's required mm -hmm. because I know I can put that there. You if, don't want to deal with the nil point. Nil. It, nil pointers are annoying. I know. So, as soon as you said nil pointer, I felt myself kind of. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit <laughs> scary. So, so in this case, a team always has an ID and a name. It might not have logo ID, a logo, so they're not required. Yeah. Um, and then these two values may not be there either, so they're not required either. Yeah. But every time you get a team, you'll always have an ID and a name. Cool. Um, and then outside of attributes, you will have your views. So every media type will have a default view. That's just a general requirement. If it's, if it's a media type, it has a default view. And this is just a list of attributes with just the names. So most of your media types will only have a default type, will only have a default view, and their list of attributes will exactly match yeah. the values. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, like for example, that uh, let me pull up in user design type user. Uh, you got a bunch of views. Yeah, user here has got Default, three. Default, owner, admin. So, so if, if a generic person gets a user, they get the default view. Yeah. which has only got these values, which is not that much. Yeah. Uh, if the person who is the user gets their own user struct, yeah. they get this one, which has got a lot more information. Yeah. And then if uh, Greer Commons administrator gets a user, they get even they get this stuff, yeah. which may have some more in, like administrator only yeah. values. This is brilliant. So, but all three of the all three of these though is just taking from this list of attributes. Yeah. And this required list has all the things that are required. Um, just because something's required does not mean it has to be in a view. Yeah. For example, email is required, but it's not in the default view. Yeah. That just means that if you're sending back a default, it's not going to have the email. Okay. But owner and admin will both have email. So if it's specified it's in the view and it's required, it's got to be there. Otherwise, if it's not specified in the view and it's required, no problem. We're not no sending problem. it anyhow. Sending it anyway. doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I could see why that required a, a line or two of explanation. Yes, that could be interpreted the, both ways. Exactly. So yeah, required is just if you're if you're sending it back and it's required, you have to have it. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, so yeah, that's input and output. Um, so I think I'll explain the two the two kind of gotchas, the main gotchas for Go One that Go Two is kind of fixed. Okay. Um, cool. Next video. Next video. Yeah, let's break it up. Yeah. I feel like I'm at the movies. I'm having popcorn. <laughs> and I'm, I'm watching this amazing drama. It's cool. I like this movie. <laughs>